Welcome, families, back to VBS at Home Week 2. We are studying the armor of God. Before we get started, I need you all to grab your Bibles. I'm going to give you three minutes to go grab your Bible. Uh, If you don't have your own Bible, ask mom and dad if you could use theirs or share with them. But everybody grab a Bible. Three minutes, ready, go. All right, now that we're all back, we're, we're studying the armor of God. And just to recap kind of where we've been, why do we need armor? The Bible says that God has given us armor, but why do we need to have armor? If you'll remember from last week, we have an enemy that is trying to get us uh, to disobey God. He's trying to draw us away from God, and we can't see this enemy. We we can't see who is trying to tempt us, and we can't really see the, the sin in our hearts, but we know that it's there. And God has given us equipment to fight against the schemes of the devil. And so that's what we're uh, studying. We are in a battle against spiritual forces we can't see. And so last week we talked about the belt of truth. The belt of truth is important because it keeps all the other pieces of our armor together. Knowing what's true is incredibly important for us because it keeps everything else in our lives together. This week, we're going to be talking about the breastplate of righteousness. Now, let me ask you guys a question. What is righteousness? Go ahead and talk amongst yourselves and and try and figure out if you could come up with a definition in your house of what righteousness is. Go.
Righteousness means having done nothing wrong. All right? Means having not done anything wrong. Let me ask you this. Have you ever done something that is wrong? Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever taken something that maybe didn't belong to you? Have you ever been really angry at somebody? Have you always obeyed God and did everything that he wanted you to do? And we, we have a problem if we start asking ourselves those questions because we begin to realize that we are not righteous. We are actually very guilty of doing a lot of things wrong. This is called sin. Anything we think, say, or do that breaks God's laws. Things like stealing, lying, disobeying our parents. We don't have a righteousness of our own. And so righteousness, being having not done anything wrong, means that we, we need someone to give us righteousness because we don't have a righteousness of our own. The Bible says in Romans 3.10 that there is no one righteous, not even one single person. Think of all the people that you know in your life. Your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, grandma, grandpa. The Bible says none of them are righteous. None of us are righteous. And so we have a big problem because this week we're talking about the breastplate of righteousness. But how can we have a breastplate of righteousness if we are are not righteous. The Bible also tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, this is how we get the righteousness we need to cover us, to cover our hearts. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. The Bible says that God made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Kids, do you know who Paul is talking about there, who the Bible is talking about right there in that passage? Go ahead and give a guess. If you said Jesus, that is correct. God made Jesus, who is the only one who never did anything wrong. Jesus was perfectly righteous. He always did the right thing. He always obeyed God. He never sinned. God made Jesus, who was perfect, to become sin for us. So we, we gave Jesus our sinfulness, and God gave us Jesus' righteousness. So now that when God looks at us, when we trust in Him and we follow Him, God looks at us as if we are righteous, just like Jesus was. Because Jesus took our sin to the cross, and He died there for us. Because of Jesus, God has made us righteous. I want you to say this with me, kids. Because of Jesus, God has made me righteous. All right, let's try it. Ready? One, two, three. Because of Jesus, God has made me righteous. Good job. So how does Jesus' righteousness protect us from the enemy? Because remember, God's given us all this equipment to protect us from our enemy, right? We have the belt of truth that's going to protect us from the enemy's lives, lies. What does the breastplate of righteousness protect us from? The breastplate of righteousness protects us from our enemy who likes to trick us into believing that God doesn't love us. Sometimes we get tricked into thinking that we, we could never be good enough for God. And, and that's actually true. We could never be good enough for God. But then, then our enemy likes to make us think that we could never be forgiven of our sin. We could never be accepted by God. That God will never love us because of all of the sin that we've done in our lives. The truth is, is that Jesus, because Jesus took our sin from us and gave us his righteousness, our righteousness is now covering our hearts so that when the, the, uh, our enemy, the devil, tries to accuse us of all the things that we've done bad in our lives, we know that the, the breastplate of righteousness, the, the righteousness of Jesus covers us. When we put on the breastplate of righteousness, we are protecting ourselves from the lies of our enemy, and trusting in Jesus to be our righteousness. And that's what we're going to talk more about this week. We're going to do some songs. We have a yummy treat planned, so parents, uh, be sure to help.
the kids out with baking the yummy treat that's going to help us remember that the breastplate of righteousness protects our heart. We're going to talk more about that in a bit. Uh, Grandma Deb's going to pay us a visit, and she's going to tell us a story about King David and how he wore a breastplate of righteousness. He trusted in the righteousness of God for his life. And then we have Miss Christy who's going to talk more about what this means, to wear the breastplate of righteousness. And hopefully I'll be able to help her out with the rap, if you remember the rap that we're going to do. But let's take a moment. We're going to pray, and then we're going to sing some songs, okay? All right, let's fold our hands. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear God, we thank you so much that Jesus is our righteousness. We have sinned against you many times. Every time that we have stolen things, every time we've dishonored our parents, every time we've wanted things that don't belong to us, there are so many ways that we have sinned against you. And we are guilty before you, but... Jesus was made to to take our sin from us. And he gives us his righteousness. And now, Lord, this week, I pray that we would learn how to put on the righteousness of Jesus to protect our hearts from the enemy. Because our enemy wants us to believe that we're never, ever going to be accepted by you. That we can never be forgiven that we could never be made righteous before you. But the truth is, is that because of Jesus, we can be righteous before God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son yeah this is the testimony that God gave us 
eternal life And this life is in the sun Whoever has the sun has life Whoever does not have the Son of God Does not have life Jesus said I am the way and the truth and the life I am the way and the truth and the life No one comes to the Father except through That God gave us eternal life And this life is in His Son Whoever has the Son has life Whoever does not have the Son of God Does not have life Cause Jesus said I am the way and the truth and the life I am the way and the truth and the life No one comes to the Father That God gave us eternal life And this life is in His Son Yeah, this is the testimony That God gave us eternal life And this life is in His Son This life is in His Son This life is in His Son This life is in His Son
righteousness, gospel shoes of peace. Take up the shield of faith, helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand. Welcome back, kids. Today, we're going to hear the story of how David's heart was protected when he did right. Okay? Listen carefully, because I'm going to ask you an important question at the end of the story. King Saul had decided not to hunt for David, at least for a while. David and his men went to the desert of Maon. A rich man named Nabal lived there. David and his men had lived among the shepherds who tended Nabal's 3,000 sheep for a, a long time. They were like a wall around Nabal's flocks, protecting them day and night. They treated the shepherds well. None of the sheep were lost or missing during the whole time that David's men were there. David heard Nabal was shearing his sheep which is like harvest time. The shearers come and cut the wool from the sheep, and at night there is feasting and celebration. David and his men didn't get much to eat living in the desert, so he hoped Nabal would show his thanks for protecting his flocks by giving David and his men some food. David sent ten young men to Nabal. Greetings in David's name, they said. Long life to you and health to you and yours. Since it is a time of feasting for you, and since in all the time we were with your shepherds, nothing was missing, we would be thankful for whatever you might be able to spare for us. But Nabal was very rude to them. Who is David, he asked, and why should I give my meat to men who come from who knows where? David's men went back to David and reported what Nabal had said. David became very angry. Put on your swords, he said. He and 400 of his men set off down the mountain for Nabal's house. One of Nabal's servants had heard the conversation between David's men and Nabal. He went to Nabal's wife, Abigail. David sent messengers to greet our master Nabal, but he hurled insults at them. David and his men were very good to us as we tended the master's flocks, but our master is such a wicked man and no one can talk to him. See what you can do, because disaster is hanging over Nabal and his whole household. Abigail wasted no time. She gathered 200 loaves of bread, two wineskins, five sheep that were prepared for cooking, some grain, 100 raisin cakes, and 200 cakes of pressed figs. She placed all of this on donkeys and she set out for David's camp. She met David and his men coming down the mountain. David had just said, may God help me if I leave even one male of Nabal's household alive. Quickly, Abigail got off her donkey and bowed down with her face to the ground before David. Please, my lord, she said, hear what I have to say. Pay no attention to Nabal. His name means fool. Foolishness follows him wherever he goes. I was not there when your men came. Look, I have brought this gift of food for the men who follow you. Please let the offense be mine and forgive me. Then Abigail said, if I may be so bold... Please don't do something wicked now that you will be sorry for later. Don't take revenge and shed blood in anger. God is going to preserve your life. 
One day he is going to make you king. Keep your heart clean before him. David listened. He realized God would not be pleased if he carried out his plans. He had almost made a huge mistake. David said to Abigail, praise the God of Israel for sending you to meet me. Bless you for your good sense. Thank you for keeping me from taking revenge with my own hands. I accept your gift and I forgive you. Go in peace. Abigail went home, and when she told her husband of David's forgiveness, his heart failed him, and he became like a stone. Ten days later, he died. He had not lived right, and God punished him. But David praised God for keeping him from sin and for dealing with Nabal's wrongdoing. Okay, kids, can you tell me who was wearing the breastplate of righteousness, which means right living by God's rules? Why don't you tell your parents that? Also, if you were listening carefully, can you tell your parents the names of two people that I told you about in the story? Well, until next time, bye-bye. this was a regular VBS, we'd be filled. But we're saying hello from here. We miss you. So let's start by saying our theme verse, Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. You know, last week we talked about the belt of 
truth, right? And where does truth come from? Truth comes from the Bible, the word of God. The second piece of armor is the breastplate of righteousness. We put on the breastplate of righteousness when we choose to follow God. In our Bible story with Grandma Deb, we heard how Abigail and David chose to follow God by being kind and showing forgiveness. How can you choose to follow God? I bet you can be kind and share and be thankful and show forgiveness too. Tonight, our Bible passage is from Ephesians 6, 14. It says, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So righteousness, that's a big word. And Pastor Jeremy shared with us a little bit about what it means to be righteous. You know, only Jesus is righteous. He's the pure and perfect one. But we can't be perfect. But we can choose to try our best and to follow him. So if you think of a soldier in the army and the armor that they have on themselves, what piece of armor protects their heart? The breastplate, right? So God gives us the breastplate of righteousness to protect us from sin. When we put on that breastplate, we are protecting ourselves. God gives us his word and his truth to help us and protect us. You know, Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us, even when we don't mean to or don't try to, we sin. So we need Jesus. Do you remember what sin is? Sin is anything we think, say, do, or do not do that does not please God. And we want to try our best to please God. So we need to remember to put on that breastplate of righteousness. We don't want to leave it laying around. We want to pick it up and put it on. Hmm. So how do we put on that breastplate of righteousness? Well, it's not something you can put on like a coat or your clothes. It's that invisible armor that God gives us through his son Jesus. We are sinners and we have this black and dirty and ugly heart. But Jesus' death on the cross, his purity and his perfect life covers our sin. And he has victory over death. And his rising from the dead gives us that breastplate of righteousness. Should we give our friends here a breastplate of righteousness? Remember that belt of truth that holds everything else in place. Maybe you can think of some names for our friends here. You could email and let me know. And we're going to give this guy righteousness as well. Okay. You know, at the end of the night, we are going to sing a song that many of you know. And it's from Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11. It says, how can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word? You know, your word is the Bible. This song talks about how to be righteous. It says, with my whole heart, I seek you. That song is talking about us seeking Jesus with our whole heart. Let me not wander from your commandments. Where do we find God's commandments? In the Bible, right? And store up your word in my heart. Spend time reading God's word. Spend time memorizing and meditating, thinking about the words that are in the Bible. And we can put on that breastplate of righteousness. See, I have a friend who made a little breastplate of righteousness, right? You can use all kinds of different things to make your own breastplate. If you want to, she's got a back here. You could yarn, put yarn around and have it. To remind you, it would sure be fun to see pictures of you wearing the armor that you can create each week. Should we call Pastor Jeremy up and give him a chance at this rap here that we learned? And you guys can sing it with us and we'll practice our armor of God rap so we can remember all the different pieces of armor. Okay, I'll let you get going with your sound effects. Okay, pick in your family. Who's got the sound effects? Dad's in the background. We need a beatbox. Okay? All right. Beatbox. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
going to watch and pray each and every day. I'm going to watch and pray each and every day. Because when I stay in touch with my commander in chief, it keeps my belt in place, it keeps my breastplate straight. Good job, we're getting better. All right. Hey, good job. Way to go. All right. We'll practice that each week to help us remember the different pieces of armor. And you know, as you're playing with your family this week, you could play breastplate tag, just like regular tag, except for if the person who's it is chasing you and you stop and stand like you've got your breastplate of righteousness on, then you'd be safe and you can't be caught. So, an idea for a game. Thank you for joining us. May you rejoice in knowing that Jesus' death on the cross gave us victory over sin. Our sins are completely forgiven. And we can stand righteous before God because of him. See you next week. Ephesians 6.14 Stand therefore, having fastened the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Ephesians 6.14 all right, thank you everybody for joining us this week. Remember, parents, um, talk to your kids about what the word righteousness means and talk uh, with your kids about what it means to put on the righteousness of Christ and how that should give us assurance of who we are in Christ. Uh, we're always here and available to answer any questions and help you and your family do discipleship at home. And that's really the goal of here, uh, here at VBS at Home. And so uh, we're praying for you. We're excited to go through. Next week, we're going to be talking about shoes of the gospel of peace. And so don't miss that. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word? How can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word? With my whole heart I seek you, let me not wander from your commandments. With my whole heart I seek you, let me not wander from your commandments. Let me not want